Hello everyone, welcome to YK Reviews. Today we are on the last stop before Godzilla x Kong coming out in the next couple of days. We're today talking about Godzilla vs Kong, so let's dive right into it. Now this movie felt like it was going to take forever for it to come out. It was delayed due to COVID, it was released on streaming along with theatres and it's a movie that everybody's been waiting for to see Godzilla taking on Kong and honestly the movie delivered. This was such a blast watching these two titans going face to face with one another, also having Mecha Godzilla in there. So this movie honestly lived up to the hype. I had such a blast with it first time watching it, re-watching it once again. And honestly, as I mentioned it in the previous reviews, when you've got the Monarch TV show that's building on like the missing pieces in between each movie, this one building on Apex and with the Monarch show, it, talk, it sort of talks about how Apex was developed and started. So you've got great little Easter eggs and great little things mentioning in Monarch that elevated this movie. But with this one, it just takes it to a whole nother level. If you're looking for like a more grounded approach with these movies, this one just goes off the rails with you had the two Titans facing off one another, punching each other, choking each other, all that sort of stuff. It goes from like one of those grounded movies to then just one of those I guess you can call it cartoonish type of movies, but nonetheless, an amazing time. So if you've seen the movie, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below as we're discussing this. And if you are new to the channel, do consider hitting that subscribe button because over the weekend, we're going to be doing a tier ranking video for all the MonsterVerse movies. So you don't want to miss that out. So subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, hit that notification bell. Because with this movie, the movie opens up with Skull Island. You see in his natural habitat, scratching his ass, taking a shower, where we see this little girl who is deaf, going up to Kong, she's made him this handmade teddy bear of Kong himself. And so Kong sees this, he grabs a tree, sharpens it, throws it into the sky to reveal this dome, where we come to find out that he's actually in a monarch outpost due to them keeping him away from Godzilla to avoid this big confrontation because of what happens from the last movie with Godzilla, King of the Monsters. And so then we get introduced to the Apex Cybernetics. We see Brian Tyree Henry in there. He's this podcaster, this conspiracy podcaster. He's shouting out to the world because he's going like deep undercover into Apex Cybernetics. So he's downloading these files, stealing these files from the computer, but that's when you get the ground shaking, you see Godzilla attacking this location, this lab of Apex. So as like everybody's trying to evacuate, everybody's trying to escape, you get to see Godzilla destroying this facility, destroying the city of Hong Kong due to the facility there. And with Brian Terry Henry, as he's trying to escape, as he's trying to go dig further, they notice this sort of like solid sphere container, which seemed like suspicious tech, which also seemed like it was emitting this pulse, that was what was luring Godzilla to this location, so it must have been Godzilla trying to destroy this tech, which Brian Tyree Henry saw. As we're continuing with the human side of things here, because I'll be honest, the human side of things when it comes to this movie was still, again, like one of the weaker points in the movie, because when it comes to like Brian Tyree Henry, you've got Millie Bobby Brown who's back, she's also trying to tell her dad that something's provoking Godzilla, which is why he attacked. Hong Kong, but the dad's just brushing it aside. So you've got Millie Bobby Brown who listens to Brian Tyree Henry's podcast. She goes and gets this character, Josh, who's played by Julian Dennison, who honestly I've known him from like Deadpool 2, that character. So both of them go and track Brian Tyree Henry's character by following the bleach patterns because Brian Terry Henry apparently showers in bleach for some reason. So they're off going to like look for him. Once they do find him, they start talking about Brian Terry Henry's wife and Godzilla and Apex cybernetics and what they're gonna do and how they can stop them. And I'll be honest, like when it comes to like them, cause you have the movie with Godzilla and Kong and the focus on that. But then once it switches to like their portion, it kind of slows the pacing down a lot with the movie because of like what's going on with them, them trying to be the characters that find out about Mechagodzilla and like Apex Cybernetics and they're behind everything. So they're basically showing all of that from their point of view so that we as the audience can see it. But it just slows the movie down a lot for me there. So you've got the three of them as a trio uniting with one another and now finding out their plans and trying to go and do more investigation to Apex Cybernetic. Meanwhile, 
as you've got Kong in Skull Island in like this Monarch outpost, you've got the CEO of Apex Cybernetic, Walter, who recruits Dr. Lin to try and convince him to convince the people at Monarch to move Kong so that he can try to find Hollow Earth because he needs the energy and he needs the resources in Hollow Earth to try and get Mechagodzilla working for a longer period of time. So then you get this sequence of Kong who sort of chained up on this boat. You get this moment where you've got the little girl who goes out into the rain, goes to the ship part of where Kong is because he's freaking out. And we, that's where we come to find out that these two have been speaking the whole time. So Kong apparently can speak sign language. This little girl has been communicating. So we see that moment, which honestly was a great little moment in that portion of the movie, as we see everybody seeing their reaction to this little girl and her communicating with Kong. But then we finally get what we've been waiting for, the first confrontation with Godzilla and Kong. So then you've got Godzilla swimming in. You see the military try to stop or slow down Godzilla, but to no effect, Godzilla hits the ship, which flips the ship over causing Kong to be underwater. The Dr. Lin finally manages to unlock all the chains and that's where they go at it. You see Kong jumping from like ship to ship to try and beat up Godzilla. So you have them trading blows, one punch after another punch after another punch. You see Godzilla try to use his atomic breath. Even at one point, you see Kong jumping off of the ship with the atomic breath in the background. Some amazing shots and some amazing footage of the two of them with their first fight. And I'll be completely honest with you, like I have been a Kong fan for so long, but after Godzilla minus one and after rewatching Godzilla and Godzilla King of the Monsters, you really see Godzilla in a new light. He's shining through and through. And he, I'll be honest, as much as I hate to admit it, he really kicks Kong's ass in this movie. Godzilla even grabs him, drags him under the water once again. The military have to get involved trying to shoot Godzilla, releasing Kong. Kong's laying there on the ship with Godzilla circling back and the humans decide to just shut down all the power, all the engine, so that it makes it look like Godzilla has won, make it looking like they surrendered or that they're dead, which does work. Godzilla does end up leaving, leaving Kong laying there on the ship, wondering what the F just happened to him. So then after all of that, they, you then switch back to the, the trio. And this is what I mean when it comes to like the pacing, like you've just got this great action set piece of Godzilla versus Kong, their first battle, to then switching it to the three of them. They go to the rubble of like the destroyed facility that Godzilla destroyed earlier. They end up going to like the 30th floor where they see this train with skull crawlers from Kong Skull Island movie. They see them in the train. They end up getting locked inside this train and it goes through this monorail type of train from the Simpsons. They go all the way to this different location with Apex rebuilding and we come to find out that Mechagodzilla is the one that's being built by Apex. We see Mechagodzilla even testing out its powers and abilities by killing off these skull crawlers. And that's where we see like a payoff from the post credit scene of Godzilla King of Monsters with the Ghidorah head being the one that's powering everything all connected to computers and everything like that. But with Mechagodzilla, it's only being able to use 40% of his powers. That's why they need the power or the energy from Hollow Earth to get it up and fully operating. But Godzilla is sensing this. Godzilla senses Mechagodzilla. So he's on his way to that same location to try and destroy Mechagodzilla. Meanwhile, you've got Kong, who after this whole battle is being airlifted to Antarctica where the entrance to the Hollow Earth is. So they eventually do convince Kong to go inside Hollow Earth because that's where his home is, that's where his family supposedly is. is. And so once you get inside Hollow Earth, you get this amazing sequence of like some Guardians of the Galaxy type of scene with them going inside Hollow Earth. And then you see Kong just inside Hollow Earth, you get some amazing shots similar to like Kong Skull Island, just some amazing shots of Hollow Earth in there. You see different variety of creatures there. You see different variety of sceneries in there. You also see Kong going into this rocky location where he sees his battle axe. He finally gets it. He's sitting on the throne. He ends up using the axe to even charge the floor. And you just get some amazing shots of Kong sitting on a throne with his battle axe. It just looks amazing. And once he starts charging the floor, you get this daughter of the CEO. She was in the movie the whole time with the boat sequence and all that kind of stuff. She ends up taking a sample, which pisses off Kong. These creatures, these ostrich looking creatures start appearing and start attacking. And the daughter, as she's trying to escape, she's trying to run away. Kong manages to catch her ship and just crushes them and destroying her completely. But she does manage to use some technology to send it to the CEO, which ends up using it to power Mechagodzilla fully. But, but Godzilla is there in Hong Kong. He ends up using his atomic breath to start blasting the floor. And this atomic breath just pushes through from the floor of 
the earth all the way down to hollow earth where kong is so you just got this like hole in the middle of the earth and you see kong and godzilla looking at each other dr lin the little girl and the, the guardian they end up escaping out of hollow earth into the main land and you've got kong coming in and facing godzilla so you've got this rematch between godzilla versus kong and like, once again just punch after punch trading shots after shots destroying buildings left right and center just an amazing fight sequence you got one point where you've got kong using the axe over the atomic breath you've got a moment where you think kong is winning you've got moments where you think godzilla is winning so just an amazing fight sequence and that's what i wanted from this movie just kong versus godzilla beating the living crap out of one another. But like I said, it looks like Godzilla was the one that kind of kicked Kong's ass in both fights. It looked like Kong did get the upper hand at certain points throughout both the battles, but mostly Godzilla is the one that got the upper hand. You've even got him stepping on Kong and them just screaming, roaring at one another. So yes, Godzilla did beat up Kong, did get the upper hand, but hopefully there is a rematch in the Godzilla X Kong movie where Kong does get his justice. But that's when you get Mecha Godzilla arriving to the scene because Mecha Godzilla turned rogue. He kills the CEO after the CEO was given his villain speech and he's just going rogue. He's destroying the city. So you've got Mecha Godzilla versus Godzilla fighting one another. Godzilla is losing the battle and that's where you've got the little girl. She's explaining that God Kong's heart is slowing down. So what Dr. Lin does is that he uses his ship to boost the energy to restart Kong's heart. And the little girl is explaining to Kong that Godzilla is not the enemy, that Mecha Godzilla is the one that's doing all of this, convincing Kong to join battle with Godzilla. And you get this amazing like two on one handicap match. You've got Godzilla and Kong teaming up with one another, beating up Mecha Godzilla. Of course, Mecha Godzilla is getting the upper hand, but then they use this amazing tag team move where Godzilla is using his atomic breath onto Kong's battle axe to attack Mecha Godzilla. The trio from earlier on in the movie, like Millie Bobby Brown, Brian Tyree Henry, and the other kid, they end up pouring like whiskey on the machine to basically malfunction the machine that's controlling Mecha Godzilla, causing Mecha Godzilla to like lose a little bit of energy power. And that's where you get Kong and Godzilla just chopping, cutting up Mecha Godzilla, beating the crap out of him. Kong using the axe that's filled with the atomic breath on Mecha Godzilla, and then eventually just ripping off his head beating up Mechagodzilla and the two of them acknowledging one another, putting their differences aside and just acknowledging one another. Just amazing third act, a brilliant sequence with the two of them, with this battle, like just going from them beating up each other to then working together. It just worked so smooth and so seamlessly that I loved this third act. I loved what they did with this. So then you've got like these characters reuniting, like Millie Bobby Brown once again reuniting with her dad and you've got the human characters reuniting and just watching Godzilla as he's going in back into the ocean go live in his territory so again Godzilla and Kong acknowledging one another so then Godzilla most likely recovering from its injuries going and living in sea while Kong who we understand now lives on hollow earth with the monarch watching after him looking after him ending the movie like this and so like I said just an amazing movie with a great battle sequence between Godzilla and Kong like this is what I want from the movie and why I enjoy King of Monsters more than the original Godzilla is because just watching these Titans fighting one another, it's not like them just blasting each other, they're punching each other, literally going into like a WrestleMania type of match and I just am all for it. So again, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What your thoughts are about this movie? Did you enjoy it? Do you hate it? What are your thoughts on it? Let me know in the comment section down below. As we're going into the next movie with Godzilla X Kong, a movie I'm so excited about. I know it's gonna go batshit crazy beyond logical reason, but I'm all for it. So keep an eye out. There's gonna be a review coming for that, most likely on the weekend, along with that tier ranking video of all the MonsterVerse movies, plus the show actually. You know what, I'm gonna add in the show since I've seen it. So subscribe, like, hit that notification bell so you're not missing out on that. But thank you all so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. This is YK Reviews. Peace.